Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to perform an a priori power analysis using the G-Power program. Specifically we will focus on estimating the required sample size for a multiple regression analysis. Now before we get started let me note that underneath the video description you will find a link to a PowerPoint and that PowerPoint goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. So whereas the video is mainly focused on uh, a lot of the procedural aspects of performing the analysis the PowerPoint will give you a deeper dive on our topic. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So in the context of multiple regression analysis, there are two layers of tests that we need to consider. There's the test of the model R-square value, and then there's also the test of the individual regression slopes. So the test of the model R-square is used to evaluate the overall fit of our model, and then the tests of the individual regression slopes are, deter are used to determine uh, which predictors are accounting for significant variation in the dependent variable, basically which predictors are contributing to the overall fit of our model. So given these, this, uh, these two layers of tests, it makes sense to conduct your power analysis with both in mind. So we're going to start off with estimating the sample size needed to test the model R-square at a desired level of power. So using G-Power, there are several inputs that you will need to uh, include. There's the alpha level for your test, so the projected alpha level, which customarily is 0.05 the number of predictors in your regression model, your desired level of power for your test, conventionally it is around 0 0.80, and then an estimate of the population effect size. And if at all possible, try to make an educated guess based on prior research and our theory. So the effect size that is used in uh, G-Power to estimate uh, our sample size is F squared. And if we were running a multiple regression analysis, we can uh, calculate the F squared as a ratio of the R squared value to 1 minus the R squared value for our model. So Cohen describes this as a signal to noise ratio. So we can enter the F squared value directly into G power, or we can actually estimate it or calculate it using uh, our estimated R squared value. So let's go ahead and, and uh, perform an example or look at an example. Let's estimate the sample size needed to test a model R-square at alpha at 0 0.05 for a multiple regression model involving three predictors. We will project that the population R-square is 0 0.30 and that our desired power for the test is 0 0.80. So if we were going to calculate F-squared directly, we would just simply take 0 0.30, which is the projected effect size, and divide by 0 0.70, which is the 1 minus the R square value, or projected R, 1 minus the projected R square value. That would get us an F squared value of 0.42857. And we're going to go ahead and uh, start by inputting that into G power. So here you can see I've opened up G power. This is the, the box. What we're going to do is go to tests correlation and regression, and then we're going to go down to where it says fixed model R-squared deviation from zero. So we'll click on that, and when we do, you'll notice that the test family shifts over to uh, F-test. You'll see the statistical test that's given right there. That's what we just requested. The type of power analysis is a priori compute required sample size given alpha power and effect size. And you'll notice if you use this little drop down, uh, you would have other uh, power analysis options uh, as well. So where it says input parameters, you'll see it says effect size F squared. If we hover our cursor over this, you'll see we have Cohen's conventions for small, medium, and large effects for the F squared value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, 0.42857, which is the computed F squared uh, that we just generated. Uh, the alpha level is by default set at 0 0.05. If we want to set the power level at 0 0.80, we can do that as well. Then the number of predictors for our regression model happens to be 3. So when we click the calculate button, you'll see now that our estimated uh, or required sample size given, uh, given these input parameters right here is going to be 30. And that's basically all there is to it. Now, if we wanted to, instead of using uh, or typing in uh, the F squared value directly, if we wanted to just type in our 
uh, projected model R square, we can do that too. We can do that by clicking on this determine button right here under input parameters. And at the top where it says from correlation coefficient, you'll see right below it says squared multiple correlation. It gives you a default of 0 0.5. And actually, if I click on calculate and transfer to main window, you'll see that uh, I would get an effect size F squared value of 1. And remember how that was calculated. It was a ratio of the um, the R square value to 1 minus R square. So if we have the R square value projected at 0.5, then our F squared value would have to be 1. Now remember that we are not going to be using that particular value. We were actually going to type in 0.30, uh, which was our projected effect size. So we'll uh, type that in and click on calculate and transfer to main window. And you'll see that we get the F squared value that we had computed previously. And so once again, if we cl cl click on the calculate button, you can see the effects, uh, the total sample size required is 30. Okay, so now let's estimate the sample size needed to test a regression slope um, at a desired level of power. We're going to stick it with 0.8. So we're going to need to input several things, our alpha level as we did before. In this case, though, we're going to also need to consider the tailedness of our t-test for the regression slope, whether it's one or two-tailed test. Uh, the number of predictors for our model, there's our desired power again, and then an estimated population effect size. And remember, in this case, we're referring specifically to the individual predictors. So there are several possible ways uh, that we can specify the population effect size. Um, the F squared value that you see right here uh, can easily be computed by forming a ratio of the squared semi-partial correlation for the predictor to 1 minus the R squared for the full model. So um, let's consider the following example. We're going to stick with our model R square being 0 0.30. Uh, we're also going to stick with alpha being set at 0 0.05 for our regression model involving three predictors. We're going to project the population R square uh, or the population semi partial uh, squared semi partial correlation is 0 0.06. Uh, once again, our model R square is 0 0.3, and then our power is going to be 0 0.8. So we can easily compute this F squared value uh, by taking the squared semi-partial correlation, which is 0 0.06, and dividing it by 1 minus the R squared for the full model, uh, which would get us the 0 0.7 that you see right here. So when we take that ratio, we get an F squared value of 0 0.0857. So let's go back into G power and enter that uh, number into our uh, package. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out right here, and I'm going to go up to Tests, Correlation, and Regression, and now I'm going to go down to Linear Multiple Regression, Fixed Model, Single Regression Coefficient. So I'm going to click on that, and you can see that now the t-test family is showing up, and again, we have our a priori power analysis being carried out. Now you can see where it says tails, we can indicate whether we're going to be carrying out a one or a two-tailed t-test. I'm going to go ahead and set this as two for two-tailed tests, where it says effect size F squared. I am uh, going to type in 0 0.0857. Our alpha level is 0 0.05. Uh, we'll go ahead and set our power at 0 0.80 right here. And then for the number of predictors, we will type in 3 right here and click on Calculate. So you can see then that the required sample size, uh, given our alpha level, power, effect size, and, and uh, the tailedness of our tests, is going to be 94. Now, if we don't want to calculate this uh, F squared directly, we can also uh, use the our uh, projection of the squared semi-partial correlation and the model R square to uh, calculate that F square by going under input parameters, clicking on determine, where it says uh, from variances, uh, right here where it says variance explained by the predictor, I'm going to type in 0 0.06 uh, right here, where it says residual variance, remember this is 1 minus the projected uh, R square value. So we were projecting the R square value to be 0.3, so this would have to be 0 0.70 right here. So when we click on calculate and transfer to window, you can see that we have the F squared value that we had calculated previously. So when we click on calculate, you can see that once again we have our total sample size of 94. 
Okay, so that uh, pretty well concludes this video presentation, and thank you for watching.